Okay, Hazelwing here. So we're gonna go finish. Uh, we're gonna start tearing the engine apart um, from where we last left off. So from the last part we left off is we took the plug cap and the exhaust off. So the next step is to remove the cam chain cover bolts and remove the cam chain cover. So basically, we gotta take this little plate off. So let's take the cam chain cover bolt off. Bolts off. I've taken. I've done, actually done this before. It makes adjusting your valves much easier. It's one. It's two. Okay. Those are both the bolts. It's eight millimeter, by the way. Put those someplace safe, and then you can just take the, the cover off. It's got like an O-ring on it. Um, yeah, you actually have to take the uh, the hose off, the vent the vent hose right here, because uh, it'll be attached to it. So make sure you've already taken that out. Well, we already took it out earlier. Just, it helps if you. I think if you just push on the the valve cover, the valve the vent port. Okay, there you go. There it is. You can see there's a gasket in here. It keeps it nice and sealed. And there's like a little baffle plate back here. Interesting piece here. Put that in our parts tray. All right. All right. So the next step is to remove the camshaft sprocket. So it says C camshaft removal. Um, since we'll, we'll be replacing the camshaft with a performance one, we'll just take the camshaft out. Um, so if you go to page page uh, 4.13 in the engine, engine top end, um, there is the camshaft removal section. So, uh, so we've already removed the fuel tank and um, we've already removed the camshaft chain cover. And now we got to remove the valve adjusting caps. And that's what these are right here. So there are eight millimeter bolts. Um, what I'll probably do is mark an intake and exhaust just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna go take the intake, uh, intake adjustment cover bolt out. You take these out to, um, you can get to the rocker arms to adjust your, uh, your intake and exhaust. There's only two on this bike, so let's take those two bolts out. I think they're interchangeable too, but I'll mark it just so we put everything back the way we found it. I've done this before too. So. Okay, so that's what the cover looks like. There should be an O-ring right here. Okay, I'm going to go remove the exhaust cover. valve adjustment cover this one you can't you kind of have to use a, uh, a wrench Okay, so I went and uh, I went and marked the uh, the valve adjustment caps. Uh, they're exactly the same, the same number as cast into them. One 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 dash one two five two, same number on both. So they're exactly the same. I think you could interchange them. Um, so you, you, I don't think you really have to do this, but I marked it the way I took it out. So this one has an I and it has an up mark on it. So it tells you what side was um, was going up. And I put an E here and an arrow going up. So just you know, just so I could put it back the way I found it. But like I said, I think they're interchangeable. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go put those aside. Okay. So next, uh, the next step is to remove plug A and B on the alternator cover. A and B. So the one on top and the, so this one here, and this one here. So I think here you can use like a coin or a big flathead screwdriver, and here you use a wrench. 
take that off. They're all they're both plastic too, so okay, we're gonna take the top plug off. And this is where you get your marks for the timing. Okay, put that somewhere safe. Might want to clean it, it looks a little dirty. Okay, so I'm gonna try to take the the crankshaft bolt out um, with a tire lever. I'm gonna try anyways. Ooh. Okay. No, no, no likey. Okay. Let's try just the regular screwdriver. Ooh, barely. Ooh. It's tough to get it in there, man. I wish they used like an Allen thingy. Okay. I think you can buy like an upgrade one. All right, so there it is. I might want to clean that too. There's some like dust behind it. Um, and then right in there is the bolt, which we're going to be spinning. So just, uh, that's the cover right there. Set that aside. Okay, so before I stick anything in there, I want to just clean this up a bit. Here's maybe cleaner, here's maybe dirtier. Just wipe some of the dust off of there. Okay. Alright, so... Uh, the next thing to do is to turn according to the book. Right. So these are pretty much the steps that you need to do to check the valves. Um, uh, so I've already kind of done this too. So it says turn the crankshaft bolt counterclockwise, counterclockwise, so that the T mark on the alternator rotor watching the plug hole. The, so that the T mark on the alternator rotor. What the heck? Okay. I think that means um, rotate it until you see the T mark if, from the hole on top. Yeah, I'm watching the, the D-hole, so right there. That's what they call it, D-hole. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna do it, and then I'm just gonna show you the mark. Okay, so it's a 12 millimeter bolt, I found out. I'm just gonna wanna get like a wrench. I use this kind of, um, what's this, uh, breaker, kind of breaker bar type thing. This is really oily in there too. Okay, so you wanna turn it counterclockwise until you get, until you find the T-mark. Hear air rushing out. That leads me to believe this is the exhaust stroke. Okay, I see an E mark and a T mark. Okay. It wants to go back a little bit. Okay. Okay. So you go inside the hole. There's a T. see a T, a line and then a T. So you want to make it so that line, the T line, bisects the hole. And that's pretty close, I think. Um, and then you'll notice that uh, the line here will line up with this mark on the top right here. And that's pretty lined up. Maybe it's got to go to the left a little bit, but I think that's okay. All right, so that step is done. Now check the mark on the sprocket aligns with the projection on the cylinder head. So this is the mark. It's just what I just showed you to the projection on the cylinder head. Be sure to position the piston top dead center at the end of the compression stroke by turning the crank crankshaft. So I did this multiple times and, and like I found out it's just like there's no way to mess it up. Um, there's it won't it won't go on different strokes because when every time this turns around it's top dead center so you don't have to worry about it being like the wrong stroke at least I think <laughs> uh, one thing we can do is go bust out a feeler gauge right now and and check the the tolerances and if they're pretty close to what they should be then um, the valve the valve adjusts the the valve clearances um, you should be at top dead center. So, actually, one way you can check is to see if there is a gap. So, what you can do is wiggle your your rocker arms, and you can hear that. There is some play in there. That's how I know it's right. Hear that? So you can you can hear the the rockers moving around. There is some. There is a little bit of a gap in there. And, and that means you're at top dead center. Because if, if it wasn't, 
if you weren't at top dead center, there would be no play. The, the valves would be like open a little bit. So, so that's definitely top dead center right there or close. Um, I feel that maybe we need to move it like just like a millimeter or something to the left, but I think we're okay for now. So, so that was that. Just, just, just checking the marks and stuff. So it's just to make sure A lines up with B. This is A here in the picture, and this is B right here. This, it's a black. I, I marked it black with the pen because I've done this before. Got it. So make sure that line lines up with this, this little. It looks like a little pointer sort of sticking out of the head. All right. So we should, we should be... Oh yeah, so I also noticed there is a, actually a pointer inside there too. If you look very carefully in the 6 o'clock position, there's a pointer. So I think that's where you want to line it up. That's uh, thank, thank you Kawasaki for that. I didn't notice that before, but um, but yeah, they made working on this engine pretty simple. <laughs> no no guessing where the middle of the window is, you know. Okay, so Hayes Omega is, uh, is going into uncharted territory now. Um, I've never done any of this. Uh, from, from from this point on, so I'm kind of I'm getting a little nervous here. All right, so now it's uh, holding the crankshaft bolt. So we're gonna go. I'm gonna go through the whole process first because I uh, I've I've heard some stuff about this uh, this uh, pin here. Uh, so holding the crankshaft bolt with the wrench, loosen the camshaft sprocket bolt, left hand thread. So what that means is we need to turn it clockwise to uh, to loosen it. Yeah, it's backwards. Um, people have, that's one of the things I've heard online that people are trying to loosen this thing and then they snap the bolt off in the camshaft because they, they're they not turning it the right way. They're trying to tighten, uh, loosen it counterclockwise when you have to go clockwise. So that's one thing. Now we have to remove the cam chain tensioner. That's a cam chain tensioner um, thingy. It, all it says is to holding the crankshaft bolt with the wrench loosen the camshaft sprocket bolt. It says to loosen it, not remove it quite yet. And then, then you remove the cam chain tensioner, then you remove the cam chain sprocket. Uh, do not lose the pin when the camshaft sprocket is removed. This is the pin they're talking about. This pin right here hiding under the bolt. Don't lose that. Um, also, also, I should probably kind of remember which way this sprocket goes. I don't know if it matters, but there's a little mark right here where um, where the front is. So I, I don't know, maybe you can install it backwards. Maybe it doesn't make a difference, but you want to make sure you install it the same way you found it. Oh, is it, oh, is it nice and clean in there too? Um, all right, so, and then you want to hold the camshaft chain with a suitable tool so the chain does not drop into the engine. So I'm going to try to I'm going to try to, to make some kind of tool so that doesn't happen. And then you remove the screws A and B and the rocker shaft holder. And then there's a plate here. There's a plate hiding behind there so you can see the two screws behind the, um, the, the sprocket. But you can't take that out until you take the sprocket out. All right, okay, here we go. So we're going to go do the thing now. We're, um, what we're going to do is uh, loosen the camshaft sprocket bolt real quick. Um, so here we got our handy dandy 12 millimeter, and then um, car. This is a 12 millimeter also. All right. So that means that we have to get two, two things. Okay. For that. I got two 12s here. I'm gonna go. So when I turn it, when I if I'm gonna turn this one this way, it's gonna force it to go clockwise. So I want to hold it counterclockwise. Oh, 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 great, it's moving. Great. I moved it out of position. Wow, that moved way too easily. Ah, okay, let me look, let me go reset okay, the timer. Here we go. No, I don't. I think it's going to move again. <laughs> so remember, just you got to turn the bolt clockwise. Um, so just try to kind of hold this in place somehow. Okay, 
It's a little, it's a little difficult. Shorter one. Okay, try an impact gun, but this is kind of dangerous because it may just pull the ball. Okay, so this is what we're going to try. Yeah. We're going to try to use the impact gun, the 12 millimeter, and then I'm going to use a T-handle to keep it from rotating. Um, yeah. Okay, here it goes. Oop, it's not long enough. We're going the right way. Right? Yep, clockwise. Just make sure you're going the right direction because you might snap it. Woo! That's in there tight. I wonder what the torque is on that bad boy. Let me go check. Okay, so it's supposed to be on there at. 17 foot pounds I saw um, that's not a lot so I don't know why it's so hard to get off so I'm going to use a different socket so that I get more torque all right here it goes I saw it move. Okay, I'm gonna go around one more time. Man, I really had to go to town on that sucker. Maybe you gotta use a large breaker bar for that, dude. I think that's what I'm gonna go get right now. Just gonna make sure our, our marks all lined up. Try this guy again. I saw it start to move, so I think we're good. No! Oh, man! It does not want to move. That thing is, is like glued in there, man. Man, this is not cool. Okay, I'm gonna use two breaker bars, a small one and a big one. So I'm gonna do like a kind of scissor type motion. Croikies! Croikies! Okay. I feel that's loose right there. Okay. Woo! Alright, so... So, uh, for, for those of you watching this video, I highly suggest if you don't got an impact gun, use this. Use the, use two of these to get it out. It, it was really hard to get out. I could 
this is only supposed to be 17 foot pounds, but they must have put some red Loctite in there or something, some, something, something, some kind of strong Loctite. But it's loose enough to take out. It's not even loose enough to take out by hand. Yeah, there's some kind of locking compound in there, so yeah. Um, they definitely didn't want that bolt coming out. <laughs> okay, so now it's loosened. We go on to our next step. Actually, so what I'm going to do, um, I got it off of time a little bit. I'm going to go put it back in time, back, back in the top dead center. Should be okay. Okay, we can fit a T, we can fit a L. Let's just do the top first. Okay, the top is pretty close. This uses a DID chain, by the way. Okay. Okay, now it's top dead center.